what we've got up to this point is we've confirmed that we've got a function running, and more importantly, we've got a uh, we're able to read the data ID attribute of the particular row we clicked on. So that's here. We've got the ID, the data ID stored here. So now we can use that to retrieve from the database um, that particular comic in question. Then we can retrieve that one comic, db.get. We can get that one comic and all of the fields in the comic. It's ID field if we need it, it's title field, it's publisher, year, notes, all of those fields that we created in our database. So we can do that. Next line. After uh, storing the particular comics ID, we then use it to retrieve the full data from PouchDB. db.get. temp comic comma function failure success as we've seen before and then we'll create that callback function in a moment now we're gonna get we had db dot all docs to retrieve all of the data so that we can build the table db dot get allows us to get one entry in the database if we know its ID. We know its ID. We're passing in the ID that we got from the data-id of this row. So we're getting, we're getting that ID. That will, as usual, result in a failure or success. So we need if, failure, else, success, and then we process that to then display it on screen and such. So here we will break that. Note that that is end.get. As we've seen before, we have to then uh, set up an if else. If failure, else success. So uh, again, uh, if curly braces, else curly braces, that curly brace ends the anonymous function, callback function, failure, success. Then that parenthesis ends dot get. That was the end of statement db.get. So there's our skeleton, which we've seen several times before. We see we saw something like this for db.put, um, db.destroy. Remember, there's always some sort of result, failure or success. So if we have a failure, something happened that the data is missing, there really shouldn't be a failure because we've stored we're using an ID that we know we retrieved from data ID. Data ID shows up there from when we first showed the whole table of info. And that table of info comes from saving info into the database. So there really shouldn't ever be this failure. But we'll just note it here. Couldn't get couldn't couldn't show this comic. And we'll just note it here. What um, sort of error did we get? So just some sort of console that should never happen. I don't think it'll happen. But we'll say we couldn't, we couldn't show this comic. Well, which comic in question? This ID space. That's an empty space there to have some separation of the words. And then what's the failure message that Pouch is giving me? 
from a failure to get from the database. So I'm stringing together, I'm concatenating the, um, the output. Or else the, uh, yeah, the comic in question exists in the database, so we're going to start to, uh, to show that data. Console. Showing data or showing comic success dot title. Well, when we get to else, it was success. What pouch automatically does from get is give you an object. JSON data. It gives you your object of that record of that document from the database. It gives it back to you in JSON format. Remember, we, we dealt with that. Curly braces, key value pairs, commas in between. So now uh, that, that data, all of the data of that comic in question is represented by that. Then we can start to select the, the particular properties, the particular keys of that object that we defined. We defined way early on uh, underscore ID, title, comic, publisher, number, notes. So here I'm saying um, the title of the particular comic is this. So this is sort of a shorthand. That's the object. It's title. So save it and run it. Uh, click on your different rows of data. You'll see your previous comments, and now hopefully you'll see the full title of what you called the comic. Yes, obviously you can further test it by writing your other properties, your other fields here, like uh, publisher. What else do we have? Notes. The the pop-up should also guide you to what should be in that object. We had um, year. Just for the moment, test it with title. You should see then the feedback showing comic and then the title of the comic. So this is again, uh, you should have some data, more than one comic, three, four, five comics, just to fully test this. See if you see your, check if you see your uh, the title of your comic by clicking on any of those speech bubbles. So um, I'm going to view a comic, I'm going to click a comic, get all that I saw before, showing comic, Wonder Woman. Click on this row, showing comic, Catwoman, Catwoman Arn. Haven't, fi haven't uh, set it up to fix it yet, we're still getting there. Click on this row, showing comic, BB. So it should be showing you the title. Um, I'm going to do this, BB8 number one from 2018, call it BB8 Adventures from IDW, uh, the new adventures of the little droid. Okay, so I saved a comic. I view the comic. I wrote, I happen to have written a, a description or a note. You saw that I wrote a note a moment ago to the comic I just saved. So if I do success.notes, show me the notes property of this object. View BB8 showing comic the new adventures of the little droid. 
So it should show you any of the valid properties in the object. And to remind yourself what those were, way back, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we wrote ID, title, number, year, publisher, notes, unique ID. And we'll also have photo, and we'll also have barcode. But for the moment, if we're able to see, if we're able to see this, success.title, dot year, whatever, we're on very good footing. Well, that's being displayed in the console. We want to display it on screen. So what we need to do back in the index HTML file is set up a, a pop-up screen with, uh, with fields where we can dynamically populate those fields with success.title, success.number, etc. So we need to create a pop-up screen in the HTML file and then write JavaScript to um, fill in those fields. We need to um, get back to our index.html file now. Go ahead and go back to index.html. And we're going to create a, a pop-up screen. Okay, I'm going to save this. And then let's open the uh, index HTML. Open up your index HTML and let's go all the way to the end. We have um, save comic screen end. Then we have our template screen start and end. Uh, we're going to use this as our starting point to create a brand new screen, which will be a pop up that displays all of this info. So copy where your template starts, your comment down to the comment. Copy that. I'm going to paste it right after save comic. So at the very top, that it, the save comic screen ended. I just pasted a, a new copy of the template. I've got the original template there if I need to make more screens later, and, and we will. So this we're going to start to change this stuff here. It's not template screen start. This is um, view comics info screen start and view comics screen info end. Mm -hmm. Copy it to make, you know, to have two copies of it. Okay. You probably have one. You need now two copies of it. And then on the second copy, we're going to start to change it up so that it's the View Comics screen. So you want to copy and paste it where? Yeah, just uh, right, at, right above itself or oh, right okay. after it. Yeah. So we're, we've got the copy of it. And here this is going to be View Comics Info. Uh, section data role let's leave it as data role page ID will be pop view comics info so the screen is going to behave like a pop-up we give it a unique ID Data role header, this h1, we'll say comic info, 
we don't need this whole nav bar. We don't need any of this fancy page one, page two, page three stuff. We don't need a nav bar at all. It's going to be a simple pop-up. So delete that whole nav block. Article, role, main, UI content, good. We don't need this footer. Um, you could leave it for aesthetics, I suppose. I think it'll look a little weird. So we don't need a footer in a pop-up. You usually don't see pop-ups in a footer, so you can remove that. This H2, we don't need that. What we do need is a div here. We'll give this an ID so we have something to latch onto via JavaScript. Div view comics info. So all of these have consistently view comics info. Um, again, if you forget the S or not, It'll work as long as you are consistent everywhere. So when we write our JavaScript, obviously we need to refer, I need to refer to div view comics info. If I refer to it as div view comic info in the JavaScript, it won't work. But if I call this right here div view comic info, and in the JavaScript I call it view comic info, it'll work as long as it's consistent. We'll keep it simple here. We'll create these paragraphs. Name. These are going to be dynamically filled in. All of the fields of the comic that we've saved are going to automatically fill in. Well, not automatic. After we write the algorithm in JavaScript, then for every, and if it works, then for every subsequent comic, uh, then it'll work automatic. Now we haven't done barcode yet. That's okay. I'm going to do the barcode eventually. We're going to scan the barcode of the comic and then it'll be displayed on screen. We might as well add it here to get it ready for the future. And eventually we're going to put an image as well. So we'll, we'll set up our image tag. I know later on uh, we're going to need to resize these images. They will probably be too big. They will spill outside of the pop-up. So we're going to have some CSS later on. I'm attaching a class already so that when we write some CSS later on, we will apply that styling to every instance of an image with this class, common image. Source is empty because we don't have a picture yet. But eventually, dynamically, we will be able to write the source of the picture. So eventually, um, probably as early as Thursday, we're going to set ourselves up to then start to be able to take a photo of the comic and then view the photo. So we have an image placeholder. While we're here, we'll, we'll also create a button to delete this comic. We're going to get this pop-up that's going to have all the info of this comic. We want a button to delete this comic, an ID, so that we can reference it via JavaScript. So I said we were going to be able to view the comic, delete the comic, and what else? Edit the comic. So we need another button here. And as usual, we'll have a very creative name here, BTN Edit Comic. So this, this new section, based on the template, is going to behave like a pop-up. This will dynamically fill in via JavaScript. 
this pop-up will appear once you click on that we're not there yet but it'll when we click on that speech bubble this pop-up will appear all of these fields will be filled in based on the data in the database when we were back on the JavaScript we should have gotten to this point where we are confirming that yes we're able to db.get success.title success.year knowing <coughs> that we will then be able to fill in year equal to success.year and it'll fill in at the moment if you try to do uh, success.barcode that'll be a big error because there's no barcode field in our data yet but as we're here on this here while we're in this screen we might as well set up this screen completely and then we can use it we can populate it Okay, so save that HTML and we'll go back to the JavaScript. So if you go back to the JavaScript, we're in this section here, uh, get the comic, else there's no error. We're going to write these properties into those paragraphs we just created. Uh, write the comics properties in the paragraphs of the pop-up. So we can use the jQuery selector to find a particular paragraph and then write into it. So before I write it completely, we're going to select something and write some HTML into that something. What we're going to write is the particular comic's um, title. Just one more example before we fill in the something. Somewhere else, we're going to write success.number. and so forth. We don't have to do the others yet. Somewhere we're going to write a title. Somewhere we're going to write a number. The number of the comic in question by the time we're this deep, we know which comic. So using the jQuery selector, we need to target a particular um, target a particular um, paragraph. Yes. We we could. That's another way to do it. Okay. Yeah, we could put it all together into one string and just write the whole string like we've done before. Right. I'm showing this way because sometimes we need to do do it this way in, in sort of like um, on a case by case case basis. Sure. It depends. There's just different ways to do it. Just curious because we've been <coughs> quite a bit. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would work as well. Sure. Okay, so the code here. So I want to write the title in that first paragraph. Well, that paragraph is inside of that div. So in the selector, quotes, pound, div, view, comics, info. 
So remember, you can do two windows at once. Do you remember that super secret tr technique to view two things at once? Right-click the tab and then move it to a different tab group. So I'm looking at the HTML up here. I'm looking at the JavaScript here. Uh, so here I'm saying, OK, um, let's find. You can sort of think of the jQuery selector as like find. Let's find some element with an ID of div view comics info. There's a div with an ID di named div view comix info. Let's see, spelled it all right, capital C, capital I, S. OK, it looks right. We're going to write some HTML there. Well, I mean, let's write this HTML in the first paragraph. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine paragraphs to, to choose from seven of them where I'm going to write some data. Um, I mean this first paragraph. So, space inside of the quotes. All along we've been specifying a, an element very straightforward. Well, here we need to get complex in terms of a paragraph inside of a div. So with space, we then will say P. Let's write the title inside of a paragraph inside of that div. OK, well, again, which one? I've got six to choose from. We further then say colon EQ for equals, open, open close parentheses, Let's write the title inside of this div, inside of this paragraph that equals, well, which of my six paragraphs? I mean my first paragraph, counting from zero. Let's write the title in the paragraph that equals the first paragraph in this div. OK, well, the number is going to go in the second paragraph. Quotes. Pound div view comics info space paragraph that equals the second paragraph counting from zero. We're going to write the number there. The third paragraph is year. So what I have here, copy and paste to simply change the property. In which paragraph do we are we talking about? Which paragraph are we equaling to? Two zero one two. I'm gonna copy and paste that because all I need to do is change here number to year and equals to two. Yes, there's many ways to do this. We could have also done with string concatenation as we've done before. That'd be fine. This is just another way because sometimes we need to do this. Sometimes we need to target a particular element in another element, and depending how it's set up, we can do something like this. A paragraph in an element, this is a child of this parent element, equaling of the sequence, the second one in the sequence. So next we've got um, publisher. It goes to three. After publisher is notes. It's the fifth paragraph. We don't have barcode in our database yet. If you try to add it, it'll be either empty or undefined, or some error or something. So I wouldn't do barcode yet. Um, so check your spelling. Make sure there's a space between. Um, the ID and the paragraph. 
in your jQuery selector and then run it. Oh, actually, uh, one more thing. We're filling in all of those fields. Well, we need to make the pop-up happen. Actually, let's write some notes here. Um, select a paragraph inside a div equaling the uh, index number from 0. After we've um, written that data, then um, display the pop up. This is when we write the, um, the code that let us move from screen to screen. Remember this colon mobile de dash page container dot page container and say then display the section as a pop-up what we're doing here is we're changing The name of this section is Pop View Comics Info. It's an ID, so don't forget the pound sign there. Comma options. So we've seen this before in, in our whole login system. Uh, remember, we uh, the person logs in. Is their password correct? Yes, the email exists. Yes, the password matches. Okay, change from PG login to PG home. So we've seen this. Uh, here we're using it again slightly differently, however. So we're going to, uh, on the current screen, basically the current screen, we're going to change the current screen. We're going to move over to this pop-up section but then uh, we have options here to make it behave like a dialog box instead of actually moving the screen away elsewhere so quotes here role this is setting data role different syntax but it's a data role dialog So if we were writing this in the HTML, we would have data role equals dialog, so it behaves like a dialog box. But this is going to happen dynamically uh, based on clicking a particular comic, uh, fill in those fields, then view that pop-up as data role dialog. Spell dialog that way, not, I don't think it works with the other way, the you dialog you that way. I think it has to be that version of dialog. Okay, now you can test it. Now if you save it and, uh, and run it, maybe check your uh, error list before you go there. But if you save it and run it, and then um, try it out, see if you can click on a particular comic and see if it, if it, if a pop-up appears and all of those fields are filled in. Perhaps not exactly how you think, and you should probably be able to fix that. You should get a pop-up happening with all of those fields filled in. Let me save and check mine. So if I 
view comic. I click Wonder Woman, pop up. Comic info. All those items fill in. Uh, delete and edit don't work yet, but I've got to close. I click on BB-8, pops up, fills in. Uh, I thought I had marked each of these paragraphs with name, number, and year. Well, what we've said here is write some HTML in the first paragraph, write this. So it replaces what is already there. I think we can append to it. I have to look up that one. But one way to fix this is we just write again name. I'll look that one up. I think there's a little bit of a shortcut to append at the end of the node. But here, um, OK, so it's going to say name and then title right here, number plus success number, and so forth. That's one way to do it there. So we can have number year and so we're adding uh, using this method it replaces what is already there uh, so we're adding back what was there and what that dynamic value is I view the comic, I click a comic, pop-up, name, name of the comic. We can of course style this with CSS eventually, maybe make the name of the comic italicized or uh, that text field there bold or something. Uh, actually you can kind of do it now, but maybe a smarter way later. We can write, um, <coughs> write HTML here. So we can write valid HTML inside of the method. So now it's going to be bold, and then the name of the um, comic, the title of the comic. If we wanted to wrap some HTML around this, uh, from what we've done so far, you should be able to figure it out. It's going to be more concatenation to write HTML before and after. Let me pause right there. Um, do you get a result? Do you get the pop-up? Do you get those fields filled in? Anyone need a little help? You should be getting some result. This can be polished, of course. This will be polished, but we should be getting something. Delete, edit, don't work yet. That's coming up. I can pause here a moment. Uh, anyone need a little help to get this running? I'll be right there.
Um, let me just look up something really fast here, just to show you to, uh, this is peeking behind the curtain, uh, sometimes you, your instructor doesn't know everything, and it's okay that they admit it. Uh, jQuery append HTML after, this might be a faster way, okay, simply after, is that going to do it? After, um, after, hmm. let's see how that works. So my idea here is instead of retyping that, well, we already have text here, notes, why retype it? Let's see if you, if instead of HTML we do after, in theory we are adding this HTML after what currently exists. Did I write notes on that one? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that works. Uh, let me do one more. Uh, I think that'll be a little bit of a time saver. So I just saved a brand new comic H. Clicking on that. Notes. H, H, huh. Now it's showing the previous comic. It's showing the comic that previously had notes. It's showing HH from Wonder Woman. Okay, so there must have been a reason why I didn't use that originally. Okay, so maybe with a little bit more checking, there is a way to make this happen exactly how we want so that we don't add more. Insert after, append. Can we append? You can create content, insert it into several elements at once. Let's try append. got appended. I also had a note. Where else did I have notes? No, it's also adding it here. So it wrote first issue for Catwoman and the note for BB-8. So it's probably a way to do it. We'll I'll look it up a little later. But um, that's why I was writing plain old HTML and we had to rewrite it. In my case, I rewrote it. And then it, uh, the string concatenation happens. So for the moment, I'll leave it like that where I write what I wanted to say, and then it, via HTML it writes it. So there's that note. And there's that note. Obviously you write it exactly as you want it to appear, so colon space in space. All right, so all of this was um, to view that comic info. The big idea is um, we have the object, its particular property, we display it in a certain paragraph in the div. Okay, well, the div was made up, or that section was made up with a delete and an edit. So, uh, we 
can start setting ourselves up for delete. That'll be easier than edit. And we'll take a break. Let's uh, set up to delete comic. Okay. Um, this is going to the setup here in uh, to be able to delete or edit a particular comic relies on again knowing which comic in question this comic um, which uh, we're storing on line 476 temp comic uh, temp comic is uh, is storing the ID of the particular comic we clicked on. But temp comic only exists in this function, its local scope. As long as this function is running, the app knows what temp comic is holding. So we need to return the value of what temp comic is to the larger scope. Uh, if we set up a global scope variable to keep track of the comic to delete or edit, then we'll be a little bit better off. So let's return to our area where, where we've saved all of our pouch variables. I'm going to split the view here. Remember this. Uh, I don't want to lose track where I'm at, so I'm at line um, 476. I also want to split the view. Remember, you can go up here and grab that divider and split the view, because I want to go up to where I first created these bunch of temp objects, or uh, these pouch DB objects, pouch DB variables. Uh, where is that? Uh, right here at approximately 230. So we created the database 224 or so. L form save comic, L div show, etc. etc. I'm going to add a new one here global scope variable to keep track of which comic to delete or edit. We'll call it temp comic to delete. It's uninitialized, it's undefined at the moment. There is no comic in question to delete or edit. Uh, as I've taught this before, I kind of go back and forth about what to name this thing exactly. Sometimes temp comic in question, then it's, you know, even longer names and all of that. Mm, temp comic to delete. We're going to use the same um, variable as uh, our variable for when we delete or edit the comic. So. We could call it temp comic in question, or any name at all, of course. But here we've got a, um, a variable that we've created outside of a function, so that we can use it then in any function. So what we want to do is, OK, if we've clicked on a speech bubble, we know which comic we clicked on. We've checked the data ID. We've stored it here. So we need to set temp comic to delete equal to temp comic. That will then set the comic in question to the global scope so that we can use it on our other functions where we're going to delete or edit that comic in question. So back, back on our back on our function where, where we are 
viewing our comic. I guess we could do it right afterward or maybe sequentially in the concept of it. Let's put it in the same area, just kind of conceptually. Um, also pass this <coughs> info back to the global scope. So temp comic to delete is equal to temp comic. We know which comic in question, pass it back to the global scope so we can use it on our next functions. Up here we created it, it's not defined, not set to anything, we don't know which comic we're going to delete. We know which comic we're going to delete in this function because we've clicked on a speech bubble, pass that back outside. If we've got that button there that says delete, well, we need to have that um, waiting for the event on click. So we need to um, create the object for the delete comic, then the event listener for delete comic, then the function for delete comic. So if you do have uh, both of your views open like this, within this area, again, of all of these pouch variables, we're going to create a new variable for that delete button. So back up on line 230 whatever, um, object for the uh, delete comic button. Var dollar L etn delete comic that's equal to uh, you probably call it button delete comic From the HTML file, uh, we made a button ID, btn delete comic, here creating a uh, JavaScript object. Check your spelling, because it will not auto complete in a separate file. btn delete comic, oh, pound sign, don't forget the pound sign. because it's an ID. So find an element within ID btn delete comic in the HTML object $l button comic delete. We then need to click create lbtn delete comic dot on click run a function function delete comic. When we define that function we do a console output and then we'll take a break. Um, so, back down here, in our area of event listeners, this is going to be an easy one compared to that last one, um, dollar $L btn uh, delete comic dot on click function delete comic we don't have to do anything fancy here about this anonymous function we're not going to pass anything into it we already got the global scope variable so we don't need to pass anything into it Function delete comic.
event listener um, uh, to delete a particular comic. We then need to define that function. We'll do the console function delete comic is running. And then we will also output to the console the particular comic we're deleting in question. So back up. Back up after the end of function show comics info. <coughs> here we've got that function delete comic. Now comic or comics. Remember, as long as you're consistent, doesn't matter. Parentheses and function delete comic. Function to delete a comic after you view its info pop-up. Console log um, function delete comic is running and then we can say comic about to delete is temp comic to delete. That way we can confirm that the function is running. We can confirm that the button is clickable. We can confirm that this function is running. And we can confirm which comic we're about to delete. So as you click the delete button for every different comic, the console should then tell you which comic's ID you're going to use to delete that comic. Save it and run it. Check for errors. Check your console. See if you get that feedback. We'll take a break. It's about 8.45. Um, we'll be back at 8.55. Put my code up until this point in the folder if you need it. And then after the break, we'll keep working on it a little bit more.